welcome back to the show and I'm joined once again with Franco Prio, Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning. How are you, Franco? Oh, I'm very well, thank you, after a nice little extended vacation. I know, yeah. always on holidays. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, someone's got to do it. Uh, but you came back and we're actually talking about associations. Now, you actually formed your, with, a, with a partner of yours, you actually formed an association and we thought it would be interesting because a, a lot of people out there in business and they'd like to form an organization. Of course, there's challenges, there's benefits and everything. Mm -hmm. And there's a startup phase. What made you decide for the carpet cleaning industry to form the association in the first place? Well, at the time, I, I actually had a buying group going already. And, right. um, and uh, Kim House, that's the other chap that, uh, that started the software, with, he had uh, an idea around a, a marketing group. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, got, we got stuck in an airport down at Sydney Airport when a, a plane broke down coming back from a conference. Another one of your holidays? <laughs> no, no, this, this was purely business. It was actually purely business. We were there for, for all of uh, three days in total, I think, and two days of that was a conference. Right. The, the other day was a travelling to and fro. Well, yeah. it was meant to be until we got held up. But um, right. because we got stuck there, we sort of started talking. Mm. And, um, you yeah, know, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd now we'd got to the point where we had training in the industry, which didn't exist before, and that, that's the reason for the conference there. Um, and and uh, we thought, well, you know what, the, the playing field's changing, and it's changing mm -hmm. quite dramatically because now we had people who were actually becoming professionally trained, yes, and getting a qualification up and knowledge up and a much larger skill set than them ever really was before. And we wanted to be able to make sure that we could distinguish ourselves from just the run of the mill. Yeah, I mean, this right sounds really elitist, but the run of the mill compared to the other ones who have spent the time and energy to try and improve, improve themselves. Yeah, like put a professionalism there, so people just didn't go out and like someone like me might do and hire the carpet cleaner from Bunnings for the weekend. Yep, and go, what a great job I'm doing. <laughs> and you <laughs> and, think you are. Yeah. yeah, and and but there's but there's challenges in that that come up. What challenges did you come across in forming an organisation or, or an association, I should say, yep. in the first place? Was it legalities and that around doing something? Well, we had to, uh, to, to uh, approach back then was the Department of Commerce, which is now DOSIP, uh, yep. Department of Consumer Employment and Protection. Uh, they actually have rules and regs that you've got to follow. We've got a, uh, a constitution that uh, we need to, uh, to lodge with them. Right. Um, they, they, they are very helpful when it comes to that as well. Uh, they can give you a, a bit of a rundown of what needs to be done, and there is there are certain things that need to be in the constitution as to how the place is going to be run, how well, everybody's role within the uh, with the, uh, the organisation as well. So it's there, the information is there, but the hardest part is getting it to the point where you can actually use it and submit it, and they're going to put it across the line and say, yes, okay, now you're allowed to go out and, and be a an association because it's a because your association you didn't do this for money this is a not oh, absolutely. profit isn't it's it? got nothing to do with about making money uh, no. whatsoever it really was about um, because of the fact that there were those changes there that we needed mm. to recognize them and the playing field was just so completely different once we we, we made our changes yeah. that it brought the whole industry into a different level so we need to be able to reflect that and, and be able to distinguish ourselves from the base was it at that time when you first started, how long has the association been going for now? Um, 18 years. 18 we just years. had our AGM last weekend. Wow. It was our 18th AGM. So there you Incredible. go. Incredible. When 18 years ago when you started forming the association and for the training, was it was that starting to come in because there was such a variety of carpets and materials that needed to be cleaned and, and the skill sets needed to was change? It, that, that was the thing. That it, was, it always existed. All right. those sorts of different uh, the, the, those parameters were all there. We just weren't aware of them because no one was there to teach us what there was. You know, what's the difference between fiber A compared to fiber B and fiber C? Yep. You know, I, I go into a job and it happened a couple of times. That I went into a job and I had one room there that had a particular carpet and that had another carpet. They yep. both had exactly the same thing that had been dropped on the carpet. This room here, straight out, no problems at all. Try the same thing on that room, no, it wasn't working. But why? I had no idea, but now that I understand that there's a difference between the fibre characteristics, the chemistry that's involved mm. to be able to pull them out safely or more effectively or both, yeah. I understood that there were differences and that there's going to be a huge difference in the marketplace between now what I used to be yeah. and what I was becoming. So for starting your association, 
Did you find resistance from other carpet cleaners or was there a bit of a, oh, good, something's coming at last? Yeah, well, it was a bit of both because right. there was a lot of guys that didn't want to do any sort of training. They were convinced that their machine was the almighty, all powerful. I got, the biggest, I got the biggest vacuum cleaner I in the world. I actually had one guy stand up and say that to me. He said, well, I don't need training. My machine's the biggest and hottest and gnarliest thing that it'll do absolutely <laughs> everything. It's like, well, so far from the truth, it was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I, I could literally do a, a, a better job with a small little portable machine from Bunnings than, than he was doing. But he thought oh, his dear. machine was able to do absolutely everything. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of, there were a lot of people that had that sort of um, way of thinking, I guess. Yeah. So, it, and it was really hard to try to convince them otherwise. Then on the flip side, the people that had done the training, their eyes were suddenly open. Mm. Um, and it was like, they were really easy to sell the concept to. So yeah. we started off with a fairly good amount of people. I think it was around about twenty odd guys straight off the wow. path because they 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 had been through that that, yeah. uh, that training process and understood what we were trying to do and were really keen to jump on board. Right. Let's take a quick break and we're going to come back because there are people who aren't members and I want to talk about some of the challenges that presents for the consumer as well as the people Absolutely. that may not be yeah. on board at the moment. Yeah. We'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> 